Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm sitting next to Andrew Genta from the Swanner Eco Center. And uh, I'm excited to talk to you because you're really the one who's interacting with the kids which I think is a great place to start. Yeah, thank you, and uh, thanks for having me on the show this morning. Absolutely. Yeah, so like I said, work for the Swanner Preserve and Eco Center. Been there about a year now. Um, we're the field trip coordinator for them. So I'm in charge of setting up all the field trips with the local teachers, students, and really taking them out on our preserve, getting them hands-on into science, into nature, and um, just kind of showing them what we have in their own backyard, teaching them whole variety of different programs. That's really cool. Yeah. So when you guys get out there, what do you what do you find oh, in the preserve? All sorts of things. Um, we'll, we run a winter and spring field trip program. So during the winter time, we take students out snowshoeing, and uh, we focus on teaching them about animal adaptations. And a uh, big thing is animal tracking. So yeah. snow is a great canvas to uh, to look for animals and and uh, see their tracks and what they've left on the preserve. So during the winter time, we teach them about how to identify what different animals we have out there, how to differentiate between the different tracks. And then the springtime is one of my favorite times for field trips um, because there are a lot, a lot of changes going on. And we have um, some really cool frog ponds yeah, on our I preserve. Bet. And so one of our uh, field trips is taking um, kids out to our frog ponds, teaching them about wetlands, what a wetland is, about what a pond is, um, getting their hands in. Um, going inside the ponds and actually looking for frogs, tadpoles, the eggs, the different life cycles of a frog. And then we um, also on the north side of a preserve, we have East Canyon Creek, which runs through there. And um, one of the fun things is to collect um, aquatic bugs and insects from the stream and yeah. really get the kids hands on. To, it's really amazing to see how their eyes light up. and. Kids you know, love the skeeters, don't exactly. they? Yeah, they love all different types of bugs. <laughs> Anything yeah. that goes on top of the water, they're like, oh, I gotta love that. Exactly, and it's funny to see the progression from the beginning of a trip to, oh, that water's dirty, I'd never get in there to, you know, you gotta pull them out <laughs> by the end, you know, <laughs> so they don't miss their bus or something. That's so That's pretty fun. So, yeah, it's really great. That's yeah, really cool. So yeah. w when it comes to field trips, how do the schools get with you and, and make those arrangements? Oh, yeah, so um, you can go to our website, um, Swana Preserve, Org, and um, you go on there, click on the education tab, and it'll uh, pull up the different programs we offer. So during the winter time, we offer uh, kindergarten through eighth grade field trips. So we have a program for kindergarten through second graders, program through third and fifth graders, and a pr different program for sixth through eighth graders. So we start up usually around mid-January because um, most of our winter field trips are focused on the snow. So, sure. of course, <laughs> hopefully this year we'll get a little more than last year. I think year. you'll have it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, We're going to so, do some sacrifices to the snow gods this weekend. Yes. Perfect. So we start up mid-January, run through about mid-March, weather dependent. And um, we usually offer them Tuesday through Fridays. Um, so if teachers um, just contact me at the Swanna Preserve, um, my contacts, uh, andrew.genta at usu.edu. Okay. And they can just arrange it uh, with me, through me. So um, That's really cool. Yeah. Well, this association you guys have with Utah State University mm -hmm. really does add a, a little more depth and breadth to the education side of things, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, partnering up with uh, Utah State has um, given us not only the financial ability, but also just the resources to, um, to fall back on. So when I'm you know, working on some curriculum for my programming, um, it's very helpful to talk with some professors up there yeah, and give us absolutely. some ideas. But also, um, even beyond the field trip side, having them as a partner to bring professors in to do um, lectures and um, do some different community events, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Absolutely. Um, as well as partnership with some different projects we've had going on in the preserve. So one project we did this summer was a goat grazing project. Um, yeah, I heard about this. It's yeah, really so cool. Sure. Um, <laughs> Nell Larson, our director of land conservation, um, did a great job with that project, and so partnering with Utah State and um, having some of their expertise help on some of those different projects um, is a really good, good uh, cooperative effort we have with them. Well, let's talk about some of the events. Yes, I, I think that's a good thing to do. Right yeah. There. So um, what's really cool about it, uh, we like to do is try to do two or three different community events um, open to the public uh, per month, and so this month we're really excited. We have two really awesome events planned. First event's coming up on September 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's called um, What's Blowing Our, Our Dust in the Wind, What's Blowing Our Way. And so we have Richard Reynolds, who's a, a lead scientist with the Utah, not Utah, the 
the United States Geological Survey. Oh, cool. Um, as well as a professor from the Department of Agriculture, or uh, from the Department of Agriculture up at Utah State, um, who will be doing a panel discussion about land use changes in the West and how the dust has um, been yeah. on the rise. This is a and, big deal, this dust yes, and, activity, I'm isn't sure it? I'm sure this summer with all the fires you've seen, a lot of you know, air pollution and a lot of dust and stuff in the, you know, coming over here in the Park City and throughout the Mountain West. So they're going to do a great talk about how that's affecting not only um, human health, but also on the ecological side, how it's affecting the plant communities, as well as something very important to us, um, the rate of snow melt um, and, and the acceleration of that. Um, yeah, the there's little doubt about that. I mean, we've seen a huge loss of ice this year. Right. And, um, and this just talks more about um, the effect of dust having and, and how it lands on snow packs up in the mountains and um, instead of reflecting the snow, or the snow does reflecting the light, um, the dust covers and absorbs more heat energy from the sun and that accelerates right. the snow melt which has long term effects of, um, you know, with a lot Shorten of our seasons. Shortened season, but also um, just with our ground, recharging our groundwater, our reservoirs, it's um, typically when, in a typical year when snow melts out. Um, it takes longer and can store it longer, whereas if it melts out quicker, that's less water getting back exactly. in the environment. So um, it's a really exciting event to have. Well, it changes our cycle, is change. what it does, exactly. which is a really big deal. It, it's a huge deal. The water deal. cycle is a huge thing. It, right. It, it is, we're so dependent on it happening in a very timely, structured way, and that structure is changing. Exactly. So it would be really cool to, to see how this new um, kind of research of seeing how this effect of dust is, is occurring in the West and other parts of the world. and and what it's leading to. I think people so, have a hard time wrapping their head around the idea that something so small as a dust it, particle exactly, it's can amazing. make a big difference. Exactly. But, so it would be really cool to, to have these scientists uh, in a panel discussion um, on September 13th, their Thursday night, 6 to yeah. 8. And then the other cool event we have going on um, is on September 19th from 6 to 7.30. We have a um, research assistant from the University of Utah. His name is Frank Whitby. And he's also a Salt Lake City beekeeper. Right. So we have an event called um, the Basics of Backyard Beekeeping. So I'm sure you've been to some of the farmers markets this summer up at the canyons and yeah. down at Mill Creek, down the community, Mill Creek market. community market. Community markets. Beekeeping. Exactly. You see a lot of local honey. Um, we, being the beehive state, we thought it was just appropriate um, to kind of look into that um, hobby and kind of provide an introduction, lecture slash demonstration of. And how people can get involved in beekeeping and just they want to check it out, see what it's all about, about raising bees and what it takes to raise bees, the equipment and um, well, and how important like it is because it's become a really important activity as we've uh, we're losing bees. We've That's had right. a, a huge bee loss over the last few years. Uh, different types of radiation we think from phones and different things. We're not sure exactly what's done a lot of the damage, but there's damage. Right, and that's, the, um, that's another cool part about that uh, presentation about the bees that's coming up. So he'll also go into uh, the threats that local honeybees face from um, loss of habitat to outside losses to um, different diseases that are occurring. And, yeah, you always know, like have a hive that can get to them. Right, exactly. Right. And, and some people, um, and I didn't realize for a long time how important bees are to oh, just yeah. pollinating all our flowers and fruits and crops. and. Without bees, our whole agriculture system, you know, could be changed. So yeah, can you imagine? I, I think people have a hard time wrapping their head around because there's only a few other, you know, a few birds, um, and a few other, you know, there's some some wind uh, right. pollination. But really, when it comes to the vast amount of it, the pollination happens with the bees, and if without right. it, uh, we'll starve pretty quickly. That's right. <laughs> it's yeah, going to be over <laughs> as fast as we can. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So that's really something. Well, I think that's really neat to have them come and talk about that. That's because all of us can do something about that. I mean, it'd be kind of fun to have these. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It'd be pretty neat to, to be able to raise, you know, on the, the the back to the land, back to you know, community gardens, growing your own vegetables. I think this is another cool avenue of uh, just getting involved in, in make, kind of being self-sufficient and making your own food and things like that. Well, and the added benefit is you get some honey. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and there's nothing better than fresh honey. No, especially local honey. And if you have allergies, it's, uh, it's one of the great cures I hear. So, is that right? Uh, here, wow. Well, some certain things, poll, certain that. pollen allergies and stuff I've heard. I've clearly got something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's um, really cool. I'm, you know, I, I've, I've said it before, and I'll say again, I think Swanner does such a great thing for our community, uh, having that opportunity to have people here with uh, expertise 
and uh, you know, with a real eye to uh, to keeping things the way they need to be, and keeping a balance is an important thing. So. Yeah, thank you. So happy to have you guys here. Yeah. What is the uh, web address for Swanner and for um, you guys? Yeah, the web address is www.swannerecocenter.org. Okay. And if you're interested in attending any of our events, the bee event or the dust in the wind event or future events, um, you can either um, check out our website, go to the community events page. Um, you can RSVP by emailing us at um, swanerecocenter at usu.edu. Okay. Um, so that's one way. Or you can give us a call at 435-649-1767 and okay. use RSVP. It's great. Um, the big takeaway, though, is if you're a teacher and you're looking for something That's to really right. instruct your kids on and give them an opportunity to get a hands-on uh, education, then uh, give me a call right. for That's right. Give great. me a call for sure because awesome. uh, it's never too early to book a field trip. We're always looking forward to it. So, like I said, kindergarten through eighth grade teachers, science teachers, uh, and out there, all our programs are uh, based on the Utah core curriculum science standards. That's so great. Um, not only will the kids have fun, but it'll also be helping um, just kind of covering what's going on in the classroom as well, giving an outside, uh, hands-on environmental education experience. So, Excellent. Yeah, so any teachers out there looking to do something this winter or spring with your classes, we have wetlands, um, we have uh, animal tracking, we have all sorts of different programs going on. So it would be great to, to get some new classes out there and get as many kids from Park City, even Summit County as well, and Wasatch County. Um, involves so well, thank you i thank appreciate you it much. andrew genta swanner eco yeah. center and preserve we appreciate you being on the show we'll be back after these messages